Hey there, guys. Welcome to Unwomanly, the podcast where taboo topics are never off the table and discussions with an open mind and dirty mouth are never discouraged. <laughs> My name is Jen Danzak. We're here recording in West Hollywood, California, and it is time to let our hair down and the foul words fly. <laughs> I have a very special guest with me here tonight. She's an actress a social media marketing mogul, say that five times fast, you know, and most recently she has become a CEO. Her name is Cassidy Davis. Welcome. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's such a lovely intro. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I loved it. Thanks, Beam. Well, first of all, can I say it's been literally forever, like, forever. since we hung out? Yeah. Like, like literally years. I don't maybe two years. I know, but I see you every day on Instagram, so I feel like I'm still like actively a part of every day of your life. So. I know, I know that's a good part. That's a feel good like point. It's that long, but it has been, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I feel like the last time you were you were at Retrofit and you were doing your little. I know, I just saw Rest that they're piece. closing. Yeah. yeah, it's so sad. Isn't that so sad? I know, dude. I complete. I mean, part of me is like ready to move on to the next phase of my life. Like I was feeling like, oh, I'm sort of done teaching now, but it's definitely like a bummer that I didn't get to like say goodbye to my students and really have that like closing door moment. Right. Closed for me, which I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not ready yet. No, that's really, really sad. Yeah, yeah. Retrofit was awesome from the one time I went. But <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, of course. And you were like one of my first friends I actually like met here in LA. I know. Really? I know. Isn't that sad? Like January 2017, I saw like when we were, I was looking at our friendship on Facebook and I was like, oh my God, it's been so long. Oh my gosh. Wait, I didn't know that. That's so special. I know. I was like, damn, I, I had to look at that. And I was like, shit, that's been a long time that we've been friends. What were we doing on January in 2017? I don't know. I think I, I know. Cause I'm like, I had to have met you somewhere other than social media like yes. right away. I think we did, but where was it karaoke or something? Oh, did you go maybe. to karaoke? I did every once in a while. Yeah. I was always on Sundays and I always like taught at 6am on Mondays. So I would like come in for a drink and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. I know. Oh my God. But I think it's just so funny how, I mean, we were fresh, officially friends on social media, like first, and then it's a full circle moment. We're talking about that for our topic today. Oh my you gosh. Know? Yeah, I know. I think it's really funny. Social media marketing and all of its glory. Truly. Gotta love it. It's a powerful tool, man. It it's is. a powerful tool. Yeah, it is. I mean, when would you say your like social media experience really started? You know? Um, yeah, no, it's a good question. I got my degree in digital media and communication from University of Pittsburgh. Hail to Pitt. Ooh. Um, yeah, you're an East Coaster. I, I know, know, right? Good old always... Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I got that. And then when I first moved out here, I was working uh, in casting, but I was working on like the marketing side of casting. Um, so helping them market like the acting studio and stuff. Um, and then I kind of worked myself out of a job at that place, kind of did what they asked me to do a little bit too well. So then I was like, <laughs> oh, shoot, now what? Oh, um, wow. So I was working for like a startup for a while in the marketing department. And then I just sort of looked at what I was doing at that marketing startup. And I was like, I could just do this from my home and I could make them a client and not have to drive across town every day and not have to like make this commute and be so stressed. And like at that time I was like, doing auditions on my lunch break and hoping no one would notice. And I was like rushing across town and like changing in the car at red lights and like chugging coffee <laughs> and then like running into the audition and being like, hopefully this takes 10 minutes. Cause I only have 10 minutes and then my lunch break is over. Oh my God. And I was just like, this isn't, this isn't good. This is first of all, not my best work as an actor, of course, because <laughs> I was sitting in the waiting room, like sweating. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I need to like set myself up better. I moved across the country for this. Like this has to be my priority. So I just kind of like looked at my life and I was like, how can I like set myself up for success? You know, so yeah. I talked to that startup about just turning into a client of mine and just doing social media for them as opposed to like their whole marketing department. Yeah. And they were very open to it and they're still a client of mine today. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. And so I just took them and, I, and then I did social media for my mom. So I took her and they were like my little portfolio. And I like went out on the town and was like, I'm a social media manager and just hoped that no one would be like, wait, you only have two clients and one of them is very clearly your mother. <laughs> She looks exactly like you and has the same last name and you're like in some of her photos. So no, luck, luckily no notice. So that is they hilarious. Like thought I was very legit. And so I just started like building my clientele like one by one and now 
It's a weird thing where I have a business. I know. That's insane. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> when did you like really hone in like, okay, social media is amazing. Like for me, it was back in the day it was Zanga. Did you ever have a Zanga? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. What is that? Dude, it was like, a, it was like a blog site. And I would literally like talk about like my depressing ass day, like to nobody that would ever <laughs> even read it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But then like I had Tumblr. Do you have Tumblr? I didn't, but I always envy the people who did. I feel like it's a like, a specific type of person who can pull off a tumbler and I just never felt like I was cool or artsy enough for it that is hilarious <laughs> it's just like, yeah Damn. it's true it's a lot of like memes and like photos and like it's so cool don't stuff. get it me is. wrong like I looked at it and I was like I wish that could be me but it's just not yeah <laughs> you know? I remember Kylie Jenner had one and everyone like went nuts about it yeah Taylor has one too Taylor Swift <laughs> I like how you first name basis with her. <laughs> like immediately like Taylor, Taylor has one my girl Tay <laughs> And then, of course, MySpace, dude. Oh yeah, my I mean, God. of course. Everyone. I had those, like, horrible bird's eye view selfies of, like, from oh the ceiling God. down. Like, yes. what is that angle? And yeah, why yeah. was that, like, my go-to? Like, this is going to crush. And, like, <laughs> I look at them and I'm like, Ew. like right. I put the weirdest filters on them. It's almost, like, down my shirt. That's how high the angle right. is. I'm like, And with our, like, super plucked eyebrows because we had no super clue what we plucked. were doing in, like, seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, two strings of straight hair like down the center of my face like yes. that was the yes. that was the sweet spot oh I loved that too oh yeah. that's hilarious <laughs> and then of course like Facebook right when I became a freshman in high school it was like so early in the game that I would click on my high school name and like see each person that actually like joined that day and I was like really? holy shit like yeah I remember that but nowadays you could never do that right like everyone's joining and has been on there for decades let's be honest yeah for sure. like <laughs> if no. you want to call it decades a decade whatever yeah yeah like a decade I think it's been around or even well yeah yeah it's weird how like it evolves too I remember like poking on Facebook was so cool when I first started and now it's like if you poke someone on Facebook you're like a creeper oh my god yeah <laughs> do you remember I would like we poke would people poke wars. oh yes I would yeah and I would like see them and be like I poked you you didn't poke me back yet they're like okay I'll do it when I get home like because yeah. you know we didn't have <laughs> smartphones you know I know it was like the move if you were like into a guy you'd like poke him I know <laughs> like oh, what is that so <laughs> true I had a poke war going on for literally like five years oh my god how did it end? About it. Are you married know. now? I, I think. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> My invisible husband. Like, <laughs> what's funny is I actually went. Like, I met that kid in, like, seventh grade, and then I ended up going to, like, prom with him in, you like, did? high school. That's, yeah. Oh, my God. Isn't that what? funny? What an epic love story. I know. Starting with a poke on Facebook? <laughs> That's <No>. amazing. <laughs> no. No, I, like, met him there, and then, well, I mean, like, I, I don't know if the him asking me to prom was because of poking, now that I think about it. I'm sure it was. Definitely I mean, not, that's a like, power the move. sexual poking, but, like, actual <laughs> poke on Facebook. No, we wish the sexual poking at that age, but it was more, like, platonic Facebook right, button. Right, right. Like, I don't know what I'm doing in life. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you're right. Like it's totally evolved and like the shift in social media has been so drastic and it's crazy that we like grew up right along with it in my eyes, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. I feel really grateful though that like I know a world in which social media doesn't exist and I sort of feel bad for Gen Z in that way because I talked about it the other day with my friend. I was like, I'm so grateful that most of my childhood was without a smartphone and Mm -hmm. I had a flip phone like starting in ninth grade, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I got really used to being like knocking on neighbor's doors and feeling like, like knock knock hi can Eric come out and play and like right. playing outside in the neighborhood or like calling the home phone and being like hi this is Cassidy is Alicia around like right. I think that's such a valuable um like part of our childhood and I'm so grateful to have it because I think nowadays I, people are so attached to their phones at such a young age and I worry about that a little Me bit too. Me I'm too. like I used to be so creative I would like play Barbies for hours mm-hmm. and like if I was around at that age with TikTok I probably wouldn't oh yeah have had that like really special time and, exactly like, you know what I mean? Oh, no. You nailed it on the head. I look at these kids, like, when I'm serving tables and I see a family of four all on their phones, and I'm like, oh, man. Like, yeah. this is not valuable time whatsoever, you know? Totally. And, and I, I think would... their social skills are going to suffer. Oh, yeah. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, they're only going to know virtual stuff versus actual conversation one-on-one or you know playing in the yard or yeah. karaoke machines like I did you know yes and like oh, reading yeah. body language like I think yeah. that I like worry a little bit about how much time people spend on their phones now like of course I have a living spending time on my phone but at the same time like <laughs> I like to be able to put it down and be like okay now I'm being present with a friend and I'm not like 
just constantly scrolling. You know what right. I mean? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, especially with like the little screen time pop-ups, I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, don't warn me how much I've been on, you know? I know. But see, I look at that screen time and I'm like, yeah, but I was working. So it's okay. Oh yeah. yeah. True. True. It <laughs> but breaks I'm it not down sure if that's bit. true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of that time I was actually working, but that's what I tell right. myself to make Justify myself feel better. It a little bit. Yeah. That's hilarious. I mean, there's <laughs> literally so many apps to like keep up with and always try to push out content and like keep up with people. Yeah. And like, I don't know, just sometimes I have to like take a breather and it's like too much to deal with sometimes. Yeah. You know? No, it can be super overwhelming. There's so many different platforms and you know, which ones should we, you be on and how do you do it consistently and right. all that stuff. It's like, yeah, what I do day to day and the questions I answer day to day with clients and people. I was just really going to say like, that is where you come in. Like when yeah. it becomes a little too much to handle and you're like, okay, I need to have an online presence, but I need to be present in the moment too. You yeah. know? No, for sure. I know. I think most of my clients, like I could teach them how to do it all day. And that's not really what they care about. It's more that like, they don't have the time to do it. A lot of them are like small business owners and they're doing everything and they don't need to do this one other thing. So I'm like always giving right. away like free tips and all this stuff. And someone was like, are you going to put yourself out of business? And I was like, no, my clients like don't care about that. They just don't have the time. Like they don't want to learn because they just don't. And I think a lot of people it's, it can be a time suck, especially if you don't know what you're doing and how to use that time effectively. It can be like, I spent nine hours on Instagram and I don't really know how to show for it, you know? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, you can do all the hard work for us, you know? Yeah, With your I can. new company. <laughs> Congratulations on the launch of Nash Media. I love that name, of course, because it's your middle name, right? Yeah, Nash. it's my middle name, yeah. Isn't that the prettiest name, guys? Cassidy <laughs> Nash Davis. Like, come the fuck on. Like, that's so awesome. You're making those quarantine money moves, girl. Ah, uh, that's the one gift of quarantine, if there is one. It was just, like, let me slow down for enough time to really, like, launch this thing and like yeah. get the website up I've been doing this for like two years now so okay. it's been a business for a while but I haven't officially like told the world about it right. ironically like I don't post on social media about my social media business <laughs> I know and I was like I probably should <laughs> it's so insane like you're almost having to one up yourself like okay I gotta show the world that I know what I'm talking about you know what I mean it's yeah. really strange how that works no it's really weird when we started an Instagram account for the company at Nash Media Co if you want to follow <laughs> but it, it like ha doesn't have we're like growing our following slowly but surely but we don't have that many yet and I'm like this is embarrassing we're a social media company like we should be like one-upping everyone we should have a million followers you know oh but then gosh. like I'm telling myself what I always tell my clients like growth is slow and steady and that's okay but right it is like yeah and part of me thought about making that account and just having like one post that's like I'm too busy managing my clients profiles to manage this but like this is our home base if you have any DM like questions DM us nice <laughs> and then nice. my like business partner was like no let's like make a good account <laughs> right like, right one more <laughs> we have to manage <laughs> <laughs> and you, you started it with your like best friend, right? Um, so I started it two years ago and I've been doing it myself. And then she came on uh, a year ago around this time and she just okay. needed some extra income. And I was like, oh, well, I kind of have this business and it's actually expanding kind of quickly. And I was about to tell clients like, no, I can't handle anymore. And I was going to sort of like start a wait list or something. I didn't oh, really know wow. how to do that. And then yeah. my dad was like, well, if your business is expanding, like don't be an idiot, expand your business. Right, right. So she kind of needed money at the exact same time that I needed support. So she kind of came on a year ago. And then the last year, she's really helped me like build it to what it is today. And now she's fully my business partner and we like do everything together and she's helping me grow the business um and she's so like organized and so good at thinking like big picture and I'm so like in the day-to-day -day, like keeping the lights on kind of thing nice, so nice. she like balances me out really well no Her that's name's great Jenna. yeah nice yeah. yeah I mean that's something that a lot of people fail on is they pick a partner that has the exact same qualities and traits that they're strong in you need to find someone with like your weakness you know yeah totally. to balance it you're totally right I didn't even realize that and I didn't even pick Jenna um specifically for for that it just sort of happened and fell in my lap and then now that I look back I'm like oh that was really smart she really balances me out in a great way and like I'm very grateful to have her oh and yeah. I saw you have like a community manager and like yeah. another one now yeah like you're definitely oh this is so exciting <laughs> you've know. got people man it's so weird dude I'm like well, who's trusting me with all that <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like I it's 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 very cool I'm, I mean I'm very like honored and you know I want to keep hiring women and like give everyone a platform and all that stuff but it, it is weird I just it keeps happening and I'm not like planning for it right and, which is a lovely gift I'm very grateful but it is just like weird <laughs> you right know? no you've definitely been doing this a while you've been doing this like the whole time I've known you so it's yeah. really cool to see it come to fruition in, in like an actual 
dot co or whatever yeah. you want to call it you know what i mean oh, llc or whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> but i even saw on your website you guys put like we go to sleep thinking about your, <laughs> your social media i know i was like is that weird oh, should we take that off no, i thought it was so cute i literally was like dude this like shows your work ethic like you care you know what i mean you're not yeah. just gonna once you know you check out for the day then you're you know you're done but no you literally are always thinking about how to improve things for your clients and that's a huge thing yeah no that we really like take on small businesses those are like our main clients and that's really who I love working with because they care so much about their business and so then as a result I care so much about their business and like you know our clients have been around with us for a while now we like know their kids names and their dogs names and like we really are like invested in what they do and it's uh, such a special relationship to have like that one-on-one so we really do care Maybe too much to a fault, honestly. Like last night I was up until one being like, what is the strategy? And right. I was like, Cassidy, you're such a loser. Go to sleep. Aww. But we do. Yeah, we really care. Do you ever look at like a page on Instagram and you're like, oh no, no, honey. Like every day. <laughs> Way too every many day. hashtags. Yeah. Like I can't turn it off now. I, I realize like I struggle. Now Instagram is really not as fun for me as it used to be. Cause oh, like, I bet. yeah, I just see people making not mistakes quote unquote, but just, I'm like, I could help you do this better. And it takes like everything inside of me to not DM them and be like, can we hop on a 20 minute call? And I can just give you some information that'll right. like change your Instagram. Cause you have just like some quick fixes and I could do this in 20 minutes and help you like really improve your page. Right. Um, but you know, at a certain point I have to like, let it go. And if people care enough, the information is out there slash I'm out there if they really want to know, but right. it is hard to turn off. Cause yeah, you see people just sort of doing the like they just don't know better mistakes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm like, yeah. Oh, definitely. I want to help. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's kind of like how even like since becoming interested in like videography and stuff and like acting, like I look at videos and, and movies and I'm like, oh, no. Like yeah, yeah, right? certain shots and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I can't ever watch a movie the same way again ever yeah. since you make that switch in your mind. Do you know? No, 100%. You're like, how did they get that shot? What was their budget? That's like where right, my brain goes. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you feel that time. with podcasts? Like, do you listen to podcasts and you're like, um, that sounds bad. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm the one that's the bad one already. <laughs> So I'm still kind of like, mm, I'm like listening to theirs and like how I can improve mine versus mm. like, whoa, yours is shitty. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's lovely. Thank God I have like a sound editor now. So that's good. Oh my God, you do? I, I know. I mean, like Look he's just you. a coworker, but whatever, you know. No, <laughs> that's impressive. It, t- it takes it off my plate. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it is tedious work for sure. Sitting here, like looking at my levels and like, he said it takes him an hour for every 15 minutes. And I was like, that totally makes sense. Because wow. it's like crazy work. And that's with an actual program that's meant for that. What I was doing is I was using a fucking video editing program, like an idiot and like just adjusting (laughs) audio with that. I'm like, why? (laughs) I would have probably done the same thing. I mean, unless you know better, right? (laughs) Right. But I mean, it worked. It's been working out so far. Thank God. Wow. That's really impressive. I know. The power of delegation, right? Like (laughs) you like learn to delegate and you're like, wow, that's so much better. Right. Right. (laughs) He's an expert or she's an expert in whatever they do. And they, I, it doesn't have to be me. Right. Right. Like I can get other stuff done. Yeah. Is there like any sort of company or just person in general that like you wouldn't want to like work with? Like if someone approached you, like who would you turn away? Hmm. That's a good question. I know. I was just thinking of that. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, wow, I killed that. (laughs) Mic drop out of here. (laughs) Love it. Um, I mean, not really. Like we really love to work with small businesses. Specifically, we love to work with women. Um, But we... I mean, we're sort of, our door is always open. And so unless you're like a jerk, we will um, like take you on. I think sometimes the red flags I hear when a client comes in our doors is if they want to go like viral and they say viral a bunch and like they want to go viral overnight just because, I mean, the chances that happen are so slim. Mm-hmm. And I think that like influencers make it seem like it's really easy to, to do. But it's actually very challenging to do that. So anytime like a client comes in with that word, that buzzword, and they say it a bunch to me, um, I'm sort of like I have my ears perked and I just like let them know that that's not something that we necessarily deliver on like we'll deliver real human followers to your page consistently over time but uh we aren't gonna like get you a million followers by tomorrow and you don't even want us to because if we did do that they wouldn't be real humans they would be Mm -hmm. robots and so it's just like that's not how we operate like we find our clients like real engaged human followers who are like excited about what they do and so if that's not what they're looking for then we sort of like 
we'll we'll just like let them know early on that that that's not what we do so that we don't end up being like two months in and they're like why haven't we gone viral yet you know what I mean right that's always kind of a tricky conversation so I think that's the only people that would be like a red flag but even so I would talk to them about it I wouldn't necessarily like shut the door but I mean just as long as you're not a jerk yeah you know and as long as you you know like uphold your end of the bargain early on I got like I can curse right oh of course (laughs) Early on, I got, like, fucked over by a few, like, clients. Oh, no. I'll never let that happen again. Yeah, (laughs) seriously. Yeah, two people. Did they just not pay you and you did the work? Yeah, just didn't pay me. Oh, fuckers. Yeah, I know. Two people. I will, like, (laughs) it's etched in my brain forever. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah, they just never paid me. And so, I mean, I learned a valuable lesson. I was like, okay, great. We do payment up front from now on. And, like, I I have a better contract now. Oh, I was just going to ask. You have a contract laid out and shit? Oh, yes. Hell, yes. Because I'm, like, never going to have that happen again because I just felt so, like, devastated and and just like screwed over and I was like this sucks and one of them was like a, a web series about women in the workplace getting treated unfairly what I know what? I know I was what? like she's not doing this right now like like there's no way there's like, no way I was like her whole <laughs> web series is about women in the workplace getting fucked over I was like there's no way she's gonna fuck me and then this bitch did not pay me and I was like she owes me like uh, to this day she owes me like a thousand dollars and I was like are you kidding me you literally have a whole web series about how like people you know don't treat women fairly and then you're literally gonna not treat a female employee fairly I was like that is absolutely insane floored floored oh my god I know so I mean wow fuck that lady I hope she gets no followers (laughs) she gets negative followers (laughs) i know i don't know if she ever released her web series but i have her in the back of my mind and i'm like never never again oh yeah no yeah (laughs) screw that lady live and learn yeah yeah i mean you did touch on it a little bit but i must know buying followers yay or nay you know like is how important is organic growth versus just you know having your follower numbers up you know it's a great question again wow your questions are phenomenal <laughs> i'll take it thanks babe <laughs> Um, so, I mean, you can buy followers. Uh, there's, you know, places out there that will do that for you. Um, for me, it really depends on like what you want out of your social media. Like if you want, you know, people to buy your book or like watch your web series or donate to your thing or, you know, read your blog or if you want them to actually do something, then I don't recommend buying followers because it just, they are going to be robots more likely than not. They're going to be robots. They're not going to necessarily engage with what you want them to engage with. They're not going to click the link in your bio. They're not going to be that supportive. And so if you want a supportive, like, loving community who will, like, show up for you when you do an event and, like, you know, buy your book, then I definitely would not recommend buying followers. But if you just, like, want that social validity, if you want people to go to your page and be like, oh, she's legit, and that does come with a certain number of followers, you know, like, we inherently all do it. If you go to someone's page and you're like, wow, 12,000 followers, okay, she's legit. Like, right. it is true. Right. It doesn't have, a, like, a certain stamp of, like, you know what you're doing. But at the same time, it does really mess with your algorithm because Instagram will know that you bought the followers. Mm -hmm. And so they'll start punishing you and sort of like put you in Instagram jail is what I call it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When they like get a whiff of spam, they will punish you for years. They will start like basically shadow banning your posts, which means they'll hide your posts from people um, who are already following you. Like they'll make it really hard for your followers to find and engage with your posts. Interesting. And they'll make it really hard for you to ever grow your page organically. So it is sort of one of those things where when you do it, it's hard to come back from it because you've sort of flagged your account as spam and Instagram will punish you for that for a while. And then it's hard to grow organically after that. So interesting. If you need that stamp, like some people really do. And I've had two clients who were like, I just need to have over 10K because they wanted to get like you know uh, interviews on the today show and like certain like level of Mm -hmm. press yeah so they needed that so we did it but it has just like completely messed with our algorithm and really messed with our pages and right it's hard to track anything about your audience because you don't really know who they are because they're a bunch of robots no my god yeah yeah I was literally just gonna ask you like if someone comes to you to get their following up is it like is it like considered cheating you know rather than getting I don't know. All no, those I mean, people actually following you rather than the bots, you know? Yeah. I, well, I would say most people come to me to get their following up. That's like the probably number one goal. Um, but it just depends how they want to do it. If they want to do it organically or if they want to buy. And I always encourage organic. And there's a bunch of different growth strategies I'll try before we go to buying them. Um, 
But I don't think it's considered, I think potentially buying them is considered cheating just because like you didn't do the work for them. Right. And uh, people think you have like 11,000 fans when in reality you probably have like 400 fans mm-hmm. and you know, like 10,000 randoms yeah. <laughs> who don't know yeah. your name. Yeah. So that's a little bit cheating. But again, it just depends where your goals are. Like if you just, if you don't care about your engagement, if you don't care how many likes and comments you get, you just need that number. It can be really effective, but you just can't have that expectation that like those people will ever be around to do anything you want them to do because right and that's sort of the best way to tell if someone has like twenty thousand followers but they get like 100 likes on their posts then they bought them right oh yeah oh yeah and i love going to like social blade and like those kinds of websites and looking up people's like handles and being like wow you gained a thousand in a month wonder how yeah you know what i mean like no, i'm so petty sure. i'm like <laughs> you totally this one girl of mine like she totally bought followers and she like was like no i just i hired a publicist and i'm like did you though? Oops. <laughs> I'm like, did you though? Like, I don't know. Like that's a little sus to me, you know? No, for sure. I mean, PR can be a great growth strategy if you got shout outs on a bunch of publications and blogs and all that good stuff. Like it, it can lead to pretty great growth, but, um, it is a little, you know, sus just in general. Cause you're like, what happened? Right. Like, what, what did you do? You know? And if they don't have an answer, right. It probably means they, they forked over some money. Right. And it can be really expensive to grow, it to is. buy. It's it really, really is. I've seen that. And there's no guarantee tea either like one of our clients did it and spent like eight hundred dollars and then half of the audience was um spanish speaking not like not english speaking oh wow and it was a podcast so they needed english like people who spoke yeah. english to engage with the podcast so it ended up being a ton of money and then half the audience couldn't understand the podcast anyway so yeah. the we spent the money and then the number of followers like dramatically dropped for like four weeks and it was just like what a bummer you yeah. know because he spent all this money and like It's like gambling. You're not sure what you're going to get with it, you know? You're not sure. And there's just so many, like, cons. Like, you're not sure what you're going to get. The chance of that number staying are slim. You have to, like, really actively engage those people because they're robots. Your algorithm will be fucked up forever. And it's a ton of money. And they're not loyal to you at all. (laughs) True. they won't do anything you want them to do. They won't engage with you. They won't buy your shit. They won't click the link in your bio. So it's just, like so many cons so I often like will heavily advise against it (laughs) until they're like I just need and I'm like all right if you just need Mm -hmm. but I need you to be aware of all these other things right and you get judged like crazy like (laughs) I just did (laughs) you know and everyone will judge you for it everyone (laughs) will judge you can't sit with us (laughs) (laughs) oh my god I mean a friend of mine once actually told me that she got passed up for an acting role because she didn't have enough followers and I'm like is that the reason A and B, if that is the reason, like, have you heard of anything like that happening in LA? Like, have you been passed up for something like that? Um, I don't know if it's happened to me specifically, but it it's definitely is something that a lot of actors talk about. I think really? that that's really only for like really low budget um, indie stuff that just, they need you to have a strong following because they don't have the budget in their film to do the marketing. So they mm. need to hire people who have like 10,000 followers or more so that when you post about the film, they're essentially like getting their marketing budget paid for by your followers that's really the only times that I've seen but some you know auditions will be like send how many followers you have in the notes so I have to like submit to the audition and and then set like say how many followers I have but oftentimes I'm really seeing it for like low budget stuff and again like when they don't have a marketing budget so they're really relying on their actors to essentially be their marketing team interesting but I mean for the legit stuff for the real deal like you know NCIS casting directors don't care how many followers you have um so for like the big stuff it doesn't really matter so I always tell actors like don't worry about that stuff if it happens in a small audition or like a low budget sort of thing great if if you lost the part because of that then it wasn't a good part anyway because if that's how they're basing their casting I I worry about the quality of the film right but I think the legit stuff I it doesn't really matter but it, it does come into play when um like especially commercials they will check your Instagram just to see like your general vibe of who you are interesting, um, and make sure you like pass the approval test. So like flow from progressive, they made sure her Instagram was like appropriate to be like essentially the progressive spokesperson for the future, you know? Yeah. So if she had like pictures of her, like chugging vodka or something on her Instagram, you know, she might not have gotten that job. So I do advise actors who come to me to just like, you know, have an idea of the roles they play and have an idea of the kind of things they want to work on 
when they go to post on social media, because if they're like, I want to, you know, be a spokesperson for like this pillow company or like this really family <laughs> brand, you know, yeah. then I'm like, well, then maybe don't post a bunch of drunk photos of you on Instagram <laughs> just because like, just an idea, <laughs> just because those cast characters will be like, oh, I don't know if we can trust her to be our spokesperson, you know? Right. Oh yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if you're like, no, I love to be the girl at a bar who's drunk. That's like what I love to play on in acting. And I'm like, great, go for it. Like, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but it, I think it's just something to be aware of, like your online presence in general, what you put out there. Oh yeah. Oh Especially yeah. In definitely. Entertainment. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, a lot of people don't even realize that you really have to watch what you say if you don't want that out there forever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. for me, I don't give a shit, but there's a lot of things that, you know, people are, are, it's coming out of the woodworks now of, you know, them saying certain things and they tweeted this six years ago. And like, yeah. even though you delete it, like it still lives on the internet. Someone probably screenshot that thing, especially if you have a big following, yeah. you know, God. No, for sure. That's I'm not, I don't envy celebrities for that because I think that would be really hard to just feel like you can never make a mistake, you know, because yeah. I think I mean, I think some celebrities like have made a lot of mistakes and they like potentially deserve to be canceled like they were. But <laughs> other ones I sort of look at like they just didn't know any better. And now they do. And we're all sort of evolving as a culture. So I do feel bad that social media can do that. Like it, yeah. it can keep all the things you've ever, I mean, cause if I looked at like my eighth grade posts, like I definitely wasn't like right. as intelligent and empathetic and right. compassionate as I am now. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure there's shit out there. Oh, definitely. And that's so, why I like deleted my Twitter like a while ago. And then I got a new one because I was like, I know I've said some shit on here. You wow. Know? That's smart. Yeah. yeah. But it's also like, I don't know. It, it can scare people away from even getting any sort of social media. I mean, look at like, obviously they're big enough names, but like Emma Stone doesn't have any, you know, Jennifer mm -hmm. Lawrence doesn't have any. I mean, like how important is it to actually be able to brand yourself and have a social media presence versus just like going dark, you know, like sometimes I just want to go dark. Yeah, I don't no, know. totally. I mean, in, in entertainment industry specifically, I say like there's so many unknowns in this industry. Like why not equip yourself with all the tools possible to potentially succeed? And, and social media is definitely one of those tools. And it's not going anywhere so when I hear like actors or filmmakers be like do I really need it I'm always like yes you really need it because number one like it's so I mean this industry is so just like you have no idea what's happening next it's such a curveball industry like you don't right. know what the future holds so like I look at that and I'm like how can I best equip myself to like walk into whatever is coming with with like all the tools possible and social media definitely is one I mean I use it to connect with casting directors I use it to keep in touch with other actors and producers and filmmakers and see what they're doing and like build relationships and that's sort of the best part of social media is that it does allow you to build like virtual relationships with all kinds of people right so if you are using it effectively it can be so effective for you and your career and nowadays I feel like even if you're not in the entertainment industry social media is just such a valuable like a vessel to promote whatever you're doing or to talk about whatever you're doing or to connect with like like minded people um so I I get that it's not for everyone and I get that some people are like it's just not for me but for me I want like I always hear that and I'm like but why like let's get to the bottom of that because okay. I think that that mindset might just be getting in your way especially if you're <clears throat> excuse me have something you want to do or share with people you know if you're like I just I just like live my life. I'm a, like a Wells Fargo banker and I don't like <laughs> need, you know, social media. I'm like, okay, I get that. But if you have like anything going on that you want to talk to people about, I just find it such a lovely place to connect. Even if you're not promoting anything, it's right. like a lovely place to connect with people and like feel like you're not alone and you have yeah. people going through stuff like similar to yours. And I don't know. Or I even just it. old classmates, old friends. Like my mom, when she joined was like thrilled. She found so many of her old friends. Yeah. Like even her old ex-boyfriend from like high school <laughs> and was like, Oh my God, he got so fat, you know? <laughs> so like things yeah. like that are great. <laughs> I know. It's like such a, I feel like these days we're all spread out all over the world. It's like the most powerful networking tool there is. So I, oh, yeah. when people don't want to do it, I'm always like, <clears throat> it's your decision. But I, I wonder why. And like, if it's just a lack of time or resources, like there are solutions to that. Yeah. Um, so don't just not do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Find out why you don't want to do it and see if there's something you can fix about that. I know I'm very biased. Of course, oh. like <laughs> a social media manager is going to tell you that social media is important, but I just feel it like personally, it's so important to me and professionally. And then of course it's also my career. So right. He has a lot of different reasons, but yeah. My dad's like 60 something and he refuses to like get any of that. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't blame you. Like, you, you know, you're used to, 
chilling, not having to deal with any of that. So I don't blame you. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. I envy my dad just got an Instagram and I calls him all the time because he's like, oh, wait, really? a Cassidy, how does this work? And I'm like, Dad, <laughs> oh my God. I, I love, love that. Time. I love that he was doing like little TikTok dances Did you with see you. Him on I, TikTok? Uh, I, lo- I literally watched that on loop like 20 <laughs> times, dude. Your dad is adorable. <laughs> he like really tried so hard with those TikTok dances. Like he would like study them for hours. And he was like, Cassidy, there are 28 moves in this dance. And I was like, 28 moves like that just like do the dance and he's like he's such an engineer about it that he would like break it down in his mind he was like very there was one dance like the savage dance he was stressed about that dance for like five (laughs) days he was like i can't get it oh my my gosh we're on tiktok it does not matter honestly if you screw up it'll be funnier so it's fine (laughs) that is true like determined that is true oh that's funny i have yet to even try any of those like i barely am on tiktok (laughs) like i posted a video of like me singing to my dog back in like 2013 like and that's like the only thing I have on there right now. <laughs> but I like follow a bunch of other people, but yeah. I don't know. It's like one of those platforms I haven't been able to like get into just yet. Yeah, but I feel you. It's yeah. coming, man. It's up and coming. Yeah. I mean, it, it almost got t- taken away, allegedly. I know. By Trump, but now it's back. Now it's back. <laughs> no, I know. It's a specific skill set. You have to be like a video editor, you know, True. in some ways to uh, be good on that app. I definitely engage with it more as a viewer than like as a like participant. Oh, you know? okay. I yeah. like will go down the TikTok rabbit hole and just like enjoy people. I think people are so funny. And so I'll like really enjoy that. But yeah. You know, then I like turn it off and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's always the last thing I do too. I'm like, why am I going on TikTok at 2 a.m. before I go to sleep? It's Whatever. dangerous. It'll be it like is. three hours of your night. It is like that. I know, yeah. but some of that shit's so funny. They're so funny. Yeah, people Whatever. on that app are so funny, and I, know. I feel like less alone when I go on TikTok. For some reason, I'm like, I don't know the things that they talk about on TikTok. I'm like, I don't know anyone else thought that. That's so funny. <laughs> Like, there was one where it was, like, you know when you're, like, the girl in the music video who's, like, really, like, going through it. Like, you know when you're on a road trip and you look out the window and you're, like, oh, I'm so deep. And, like, <laughs> I've done that. Like, Me too. in eighth grade, oh, I would yeah. be, like, oh, I'm such – I'm, like, Hillary Duff. I'm so deep. And oh, my like, God. She is the – girl – if I ever run into Hillary Duff in LA, I you will lose will. my shit. She's great. She's amazing. Like yeah. she is like the epitome of child star gone right. You know what I mean? Yes. A hundred percent. Oh my God. I know. I follow her on Instagram. Me too. <laughs> oh, I can't. I love that girl so much. If I literally ran into her, I'd be like, oh. I would actually be starstruck and I don't get starstruck easily. Like yeah. I've met so many fucking celebs, but like for her guarantee you, I would, I would flip out a little bit yeah. mentally at least. Yeah. Damn. That's one low ass helicopter. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's taking over. It is all good. I love it. I love your view. Oh, thank you. Fuck yeah, for sure, babe. Um, do you think there's like any specific platforms that are more challenging to work with for like your clients or like any ones that are easier do you think um well the number one platform we work on is instagram just because it's uh, the easiest to grow your following there um it's easiest to connect with like new audiences and new people on that platform in my opinion um and it's a good platform for like small businesses it's very image focused uh and video focused which allows like often that's what small businesses have to provide so that's definitely my preferred platform across the board facebook is tricky because uh you sort of have to pay to play to grow your facebook page it's Mm. not like people can't just like fall upon your facebook page you know okay it's not just like oh my god i found her page who knew whereas like on instagram you can sort of just like walk into a new instagram account and be like oh Oh my gosh, how cool. And follow them. Right. It's sort of set up to be really collaborative. Facebook uh, is not that way. Um, Of course, you have to friend someone to even see their profile. And then if you want to see their page, you often have to search for it. True. So I tried, you know, we have Facebook pages. We keep them alive, but it is hard to grow there without spending money. So I get that. It's not my favorite platform for that. Um, And then Twitter is just really a specific one. So you have to sort of be a specific account to do well on Twitter. Often comedians will do really well on Twitter or people who have like, you know, 140 characters or less little snippets that they can constantly tweet. Um, But that usually requires a lot of maintenance because usually you should do like three tweets a day or so, you know, if Mm. you really want to be like a business on Twitter. Um, So I prefer Instagram just because I think it's like the easiest way to connect with people. It's easy, but it's way to grow your following, grow your business. And that's where I found the most success with my clients at least. Nice. And I know you even said like, I saw you mention that recently Instagram became extremely strict with automating growth. Yes. So like, yeah, because you said, like, they will flag you. They will. That is nuts. I mean, that's great because they want to they make sure that all the robots stay off, too, but at the same yeah. time, how, you know? 
No, for sure. I mean, I used to use this app that would like, I would press go essentially and overnight it would follow a bunch of like-minded audiences. So a bunch of like accounts that were similar to the ones my clients were targeting. And I, it would just do it overnight. I would just press a button and like, I'd follow like 300, 400 people. And then I'd wake up and my clients would each have like a hundred new followers. And then we'd unfollow everyone who didn't follow us back. It was like this amazing app where I was just like growing my clients pages by like 200 a week. And, oh my and it was amazing. Um, but now Instagram the last year, I shut all of those apps down. And if they even get a whiff of you doing that, they'll put you in Instagram jail for like the foreseeable future. So <laughs> it's really like bad. I thought I'd, I tried to outsmart the algorithm and I was like, yeah, but like, will I really get punished? And then they Instagram like blocked me for for a week from posting. Wow. And I was like truly in jail. And I was like, oh gosh, okay. And I mean, normally like who cares? So I spent a week off Instagram, like get, right, a, get right. a life. Do you right. know what I mean? But <laughs> right. it was like, it was like during the release of my web series. And so I was just oh, like no. in a complete panic. Cause it was like the minute I should be like screaming from the rooftops that our episode is out and like right. telling everyone about it and like blasting it on social media. And I was in jail, so I couldn't do anything. And I was just like, <laughs> so bad. I worked so hard for this moment. And now I can't. And now I'm just like right. on mute, you right. know? Oh, so no. that sucked. Yeah. Have you been able to really grow your own page versus caring about other people's? Like, do you do anything differently with your own versus your clients, you think? I'm much better at my clients than I am my own. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm I, I'm very attentive to my clients' accounts and I schedule all their content out ahead of time. So it posts automatically. Um, and someone asked me the other day, the other day they're like, do you do that? <laughs> Excuse Bless me. Oh, my God. I'm you. sorry, babe. No, you're I good. I tried holding it in. <laughs> Um, no, someone asked me the other day, they're like, do you schedule your content too? And I'm like, no, I mean, I give a ton of advice to business, small businesses and clients. And then I like rarely take any of my own advice. I mean, <laughs> my Instagram account is like not an example of what you should do, but all my clients accounts and our company's account is like a perfect example of what you should do. <laughs> but you know, like at the end of the day, like we're managing a decent amount of them at this point. And like my account is like last on my list, you know, like, right. no, no oh, one is yeah. paying me to do my account. Oh yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I like implement some of the strategies that I talk to people about, but, uh, it's definitely my, my last priority. Damn. I mean, like, I don't know how you actually stay like fit because if I was a social media manager on my ass all day long, <laughs> dude, I don't know. I mean, and now the retrofits close. So it's like, damn, but you were doing those at home workouts that I was actually following along for a bit. That was awesome. Oh my God. Dude. I was so happy you were doing that. Thank you. Like it was like, yeah, 40 minutes long. Like sometimes I would skip through some shit if it was a little too hard, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, it made my quarantine so much easier, at least for a little while for oh sure. Gosh, and I it would really be so cute. That. Like in the background, like your little family would like pop in. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dad would be like working out yep, in the corner. Yep. yep exactly. <laughs> No, but. well, I appreciate you saying I'm fit because that's very kind of you to say. And I'm like <laughs> currently like looking at myself. I'm like, girl, <laughs> we were so cute pre-quarantine. Oh, my what God. Happened? Oh, my God. We've all gotten those ch- chipmunk cheeks now. Right. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for saying that. Oh, for sure, boo. No, I think it's like you have to, I don't know, if I don't get off the couch at least for an hour a day and do something like physical fitness, I'll lose my mind. I really realize that like in quarantine, I'll like work 14 hours a day if I'm left to my own devices. And oh, yeah. It's like not healthy and not good for you and like not good for your mental health. And so I had to learn to like get off the couch. <laughs> nice. No, you know? good for you. It's hard. No. Yeah. I mean – how are you still able to like audition for gigs too during all of this? You know, like, yeah. do you, do you have certain days where you're like, Oh my God, I have to be doing all of this for my clients, but shit, you know, I got a, re- you know, rehearsal or I got an audition to go to. It's like, how do you balance all of that? Yeah. Well, the good thing about like owning your own business is that you get to make your own schedule. So when I take on clients, like I'm very honest about like, I'm an actor and that's my first priority. And like, that's what I do. So they all know that. And I think it actually works to their benefit because, um, being an actor really helps me like use their brand voice on social media, like tap into their voice and then comment as them and respond as them. So I'm often like acting as my clients on social media. And so being an actor really helps that. Interesting. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a, both a plus and a minus because of course sometimes my schedule is unpredictable, but I think I, I try to make up for that by doing really good work and being really um, responsible with all my meetings that I have with clients so that when I need to reschedule them for an audition or something, they're very flexible with me. And a lot of them are also, small businesses working from home that sort of thing so they really get it so I'm really lucky to have really loving supportive clients and they're all like extremely
insanely supportive of my acting career and um, like really yeah so I'm really lucky with that so if I get an audition and I have a meeting I'll often just like push the meeting back a day or something um, so I can focus on that audition that's what I did this afternoon Um, so I'm really lucky for that and then now I have a a lovely um, team that's very supportive and helpful and so if I need to take the day off to be on set um, they can help me pick up the slack if I need to but ultimately I try to set it up that I'm never like doing things the day of I'm never like rushing to get a post out like it's all sort of like done ahead of time so there's rarely like an emergency so I can push meetings back here and there if I need to nice yeah have you seen like an influx of people coming to you since quarantine started oh my gosh yes I can only imagine it's so weird it's like everyone in COVID all of a sudden realized the importance of social media marketing (laughs) because they can't market any other way right right now yeah no it's it's bizarre I didn't um foresee it and I was like worried my business was going to shut down because I had some oh, no. clients at the beginning pause my service because they were in-person businesses so they're like there's no need for us to we can't open our doors and so oh, I wow. had like I basically my income got cut in half the first month of quarantine and I started panicking so I was like oh my god I'm gonna go under yeah <laughs> um, but it sort of ended up balancing itself out but yeah no I think since quarantine began both like small businesses or just people in general have realized the importance of social media marketing and other non businesses just humans have been like oh, you know what I've always wanted to do learn more about Instagram right. so I'm getting a lot of like those influx of just like questions and stuff and I actually made a class in quarantine because I got the question like how do I get more followers a thousand times oh I bet dude since COVID began and I was like oh my god I need to just like address this in like a zoom class or something so I can just like be done <laughs> with this question I think I caught a glimpse of that when you were like you went live or something on there yeah I think I did see a little bit of that yeah I just kept getting the question I was like all right I hear you all let's I'll make a class and I'll talk about it and there you go right <laughs> there's your answer it's so nice of you to actually give out advice for free you're not like oh well sign up to learn more even though it's only a little bit like one little snippet of what you can learn you know you actually do give quite a bit of an experience for very little you know yeah for sure and that's very nice of you to do because a lot of people would be like oh hell no I'm not telling you shit you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah well I mean if I can help I try to and if I have the time for it like of course I I try to you know it's all like it's weirdly just all in my brain at this point so me telling you for 15 minutes like some strategies it's way faster than you having to do the google research and finding out what strategies are actually legit or what spam on a blog somewhere it's just easier for me to just tell you so I'm happy to do it if, yeah. uh, if I can how do you feel about filters like I need to know good question like um, all these chicks in their filters I'm yeah. like girl like you're pretty without it you know yes 100% no uh, one of the number one trends of Instagram for 2020 has been authenticity and I don't think it's going anywhere so authenticity wow. has been like there's been a huge push for it and so I think honestly like gone are the days sorry that dog is so loud I know. What kind of dog is that? It sounds like a little chihuahua or something. I don't know, That's man. Cute. I thought my building was quiet. <laughs> You're great, babe. <laughs> it's a dog. It's awesome. Um, oh. But yeah, so authenticity has like been the number one trend of this year, and I think it'll stick around. So honestly, like gone are the days of like influencers posting like gorgeous photos with a huge filter of like them on a cliff with like a coffee in their hand and their, their baby on their hip, and they're like, "I'm killing it." Like right, that right. sort of like right. that vibe of social media was like last year and the okay. years before that, and now this year, people are really here for the authenticity. Like, you know, Chrissy Teigen is like my prime example of this. She's just so like authentic authentically her she posts like makeup with selfies Kristen Bell will like post about her kids kids like had a tapeworm or something she's posting about it and she's being like am I a bad mom I don't know right and people are really like here for that these days so I think like and I love that that makes social media way oh, more yeah. fun than trying to pretend like oh big it's your time. highlight reel and that exactly. you're killing it it's, and so nowadays people are posting like I str- I'm struggling today and I'm I'm in a depressed funk and I'm really like having a hard time and what are you guys doing and those posts are getting like huge engagement because I think people are just like oh my god you are too I yeah. thought I was the only one you yeah. know oh yeah so I really think like we're transitioning away from Instagram being everyone's highlight reel into Instagram being like a place for genuine connection and I absolutely love that so in terms of filters I mean if if you want to add a little filter here and there to like make the colors pop or you know make your teeth whiter like <laughs> go for it but I really think you don't have to especially now uh the authentic like real content is performing better than I've ever seen it and so some of my clients we do filters but a lot of them we don't a lot of them they're just like really authentically them to the point where like if you saw them on the street you would be like that I know you I know what you look like I know what you stand for and I loved your thing about this and so that's been 
way better just in terms of engagement rates and followers and also in terms of sales. Like being authentic has actually led to more sales for some of my clients. Interesting. That's great. Yeah. Because like when, you know, they share about a time they failed and they're like a business coach and you're like, oh my God, cool. And you failed then and now you have a business. Like I want to learn more about you. Right. Right. It really does like convert. uh, And I get why it converts, you know? Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that, that more people are actually loving authenticity rather than all the fake shit. Cause it's just, it gets old, man. You can, you can, oh my God, like you can see a face tune from a mile away and it's like, dude, like why? I've never touched face tune in my fucking life. I'm not going to lie. No, I mean, I don't understand it. Cause I'm like, what, what, what's your long-term plan? (laughs) Are you trying to catfish like every guy that comes your way? Like, I'm so curious because you can't live on Instagram. Like there's going to have a time when they're going to see in real life and they're going to be like, what? I thought her she looked so different, right. you know, I never understood that. I'm no, like, I get like I. a little pop here and there. If you're like having a bad hair day and whatever, you need to like brighten the colors or whatever. I do it. I do like a little pop, yeah. but I'm never like changing my entire look. Cause right. then you're like, well, first of all, I feel like my friends would immediately comment and be like, this isn't you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, great. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> Cause one of my coworkers actually, like she has like a lot of acne scars and not a single one of them is shown like on social media. Wow. And I'm like, that's a, that's really sad that you're so insecure. Like you're gorgeous, but like, be yeah. like, fuck, like who's going to believe that if they actually know you, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't see what the point is in that. No, hundred percent. And yeah. And I think that they're like, you could really share about that. And a lot of people have that, you know, yeah. she's not alone. Right. Oh, so yeah. it could be really like lovely for her to like, you know, find a place where she feels comfortable talking about it and potentially find a community of people who are support her. Right. You know? Right. I mean, that's mental health on Instagram has been like, they, people are talking about it now more than ever, and it's been such a God. lovely, yeah, and so, and TikTok especially, you know, people are just really talking about like, yeah, I'm depressed, and like, this is what I'm going through, and yeah. it's very cool. I like really like my hat is off to the people who are authentically them on Instagram, and you can always tell, and I always relate to those people so much more. Like, I oh, feel like yeah. I know Chrissy Teigen from how she is on Instagram. I love her. It's so sad what happened with her baby. Like, oh so God. I like felt like emo- like I was emotional about it because of how much she was posting about it. Right. I was like invested. Right. You know. Right. And so when that happened, I was like, oh my god, I like am gonna cry. Right. Because <laughs> I feel like she's my friend. You right. know, because she's so authentic. And I also, but like when she posted that, so many people commented and said like you know, I've had a miscarriage. No one talks about this. It's Mm -hmm. so painful. Thank you for like using your platform to talk about and normalize this so that other mothers don't feel ashamed when this happens to them. Cause like most of the time it's not the mother's fault. It just happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It happens so much, dude. So much, but we never talk about it. Yeah. That is weird. Right. We only talk about like the successes. Yeah. And it's like a sort of like a shameful thing. And I feel like mothers often feel blamed for it. And it's just like, so for her to, again, use her platform for authenticity in that way, Mm -hmm. she's like, you know, create a whole community of mothers and like made a lot of women feel very like seen just right. from Instagram. Right. I'm like, that's why this shit is so powerful. Right. I swear it's not just me who thinks this. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so sad because I was like following her on Twitter too and like seeing that she was in the hospital. I'm like, oh, this can't be good. I know, but she was, was posting like, oh, like on her Instagram story from the hospital and she was like, it's all good. Like right. just a checkup, like no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. And, and then, then all like, of a sudden it's like, <gasps> And that's, yeah. it's a big wake up call. It could happen to literally any woman, you know, Anyone. any age, mm-hmm. any time. That's also a, a little worry of mine of like really? ever having kids. And like, yeah. what if it like ends up miscarrying at like nine months? Like, it's so sad. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. She's a good one. You, who did you, else did you say? Kristen Bell. She's so pretty and so good. Uh, yeah. But she, she's gorgeous. But she's often posting makeup lists like selfie videos on her story of just like walking through her house. And like, she did a whole story about her dog pooped behind the, uh, like her dryer. And she had to like, (laughs) like take out the dryer and go behind it and clean the poop. And I was like, how does that Kristen Bell? Like she is like on a red carpet tomorrow. And like today she's cleaning shit out of her laundry room. (laughs) I was like, that is the most real thing I, like I just respected her so much you know right. what I mean because a lot of actresses won't do will never post that oh you know? yeah no yeah. they're like red oh, carpet God. photos only you know right right I have to have my makeup on before I even get close to going out the door at least you 100%. know 100 and God, I, I get could that. Never be like that but I can I never be it, like that either yeah no I'm like way more in that court like I, the, I love that and I like related to her so much and I was like God I love her she's so cool you know <laughs> 
So I, I am really here for the authentic trend. Yeah. And she even like talks about like, you know, mental health, like you said, and how she's like antidepressant on mm-hmm. antidepressants and stuff. And so she is not afraid or ashamed of any of that, which is great. Yeah. And like her whole, you know, her husband, Dax, like mm-hmm. with the whole relapse, relapse stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's important for people to really be open if they want to have people connecting to them. Yeah. You know, like how often do we relate to supermodels that are just pretty right. and don't do anything? Right. You know? 100%. I, I think know. it's it's really powerful. And yeah, Dax, again, created a whole community of people who felt comfortable talking about their sobriety. And he like normalized it in a lot of ways because he's like, yeah, I'm sober. So what? And I'm a yeah. dad and I'm an actor and I'm killing it. And I'm also sober. Like it doesn't make, it doesn't, you know say anything about me it's just a part of who I am right it's so beautiful to use this platform like that you know yeah yeah I think that whole family I'm like a a huge fan (laughs) they're so cute they're so cute I do love how they actually like bleep out their kids faces yeah you know I do appreciate that because you know you never know if they want to actually be on the internet you know totally yeah and I also worry like you know they're so well known Dax will often talk about how he's worried like people will come into the house or whatever so it's I think it's really smart for them as parents to Oh, yeah. I don't know what their kids look like, and I kind of like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. But then again, look at the Kardashians. We know all of them. (laughs) No, but it's, like, dangerous, you know? It's so dangerous. I don't know. I'm not a mom, so I can't tell. But I like part of me sees what, you know, Chrissy Teigen does. And I know her kids, what they look like intimately. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Kristen Bell. And I'm sort of like, I don't know what I'll do when I have kids. If I'm ever in like that big of a spotlight, which who knows. But like, right. I didn't know what I will do, but I respect both of the, I respect right. both the decisions, but I don't know what the right thing to do there is, right. you know? And it's also like how Kim in relation to like the whole social media thing, she obviously had that huge robbery in Paris based yes. on her, so, you know, posting on social media where yep. she was at. Yeah. And I love how I say social instead of social. That's such a bad habit. Like with a <laughs> random L in there. Social. social. What is that? Social media. Is that your Midwest coming I don't out? know what's going on. <laughs> But the poor girl, like, pretty much posted exactly where she was and where she was staying. And then next thing you know, she's getting robbed. And, like, so now she realizes, oh, I have to post later on of where I was at, you know. And that's a smart little tidbit, you know. I've always followed that now. Oh, 100. Yeah, I think everyone should. Yeah. I, I, like, have had, like, one or two Instagram stalkers. And I'm like, great. Really? Mainly just one. But he, like, (laughs) was showing up in my neighborhood. Uh, I was just, like, really freaky. Yeah. All of a sudden, he was just, like, in my neighborhood. And because I'm, like, very also try to be really authentic on social media. And so I'm, like, always posting where I am and didn't even think about it. And then, like, he was, like, showing – he would be, like, DMing me that he was, like, at the spots that I was at. Like, or he was just there or, like – I like walked in somewhere and he's like, did I just see you there? And I was like, what? And without so, even saying where you were yet. Mm-mm. Yeah. Oh, that's so, I started so getting really freaked out. Yeah. That is so scary. Yeah. So I've like blocked him and, but oh my God. Yeah. You should just be really careful about that. Cause you are, I mean, you're giving everyone your like coordinates. Right? right. Right. And it can, you know, especially as a woman can be kind of freaky. Oh yeah. Big time. Yeah. And I mean, they've always been saying too, how like Facebook is pretty much stalking you and listening in and yeah. all the ads you get and everything. Oh yeah. Do you deal with ads and stuff? Like, is that mainly, is that a big part of your job too? Like with the advertisements? Yeah, absolutely. We have a whole, um, ads like section of what we do like that's a whole strategy we can do paid ads and it does you know it can get really creepy back there in terms of who you want to target like yeah. people who like this and clicked here and submitted their information there and it like, can get really like specific with the exact kind of person you want to target right um, so yeah we have a whole ad strategy team that's led by my business partner Jenna I don't really fuck with ads because I think it's very confusing but she's like an expert at it so that's I'm like, awesome you go girl <laughs> yeah what did she yeah. study or did she go to college? Yeah, we went to the same college, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, she studied theater and um, I think one other thing, but I can't remember now. But she was mostly like in the theater department. She's an actor as well. Oh, nice. And she was like deeply involved in that uh, world. And I was a little bit in the theater department, but mostly I was on the dance team. So she like hated me for most of college because she thought I was like <laughs> like a like bimbo cheerleader or whatever right, and right. then then she got to know me <laughs> and um, uh, she's not so bad she's not so bad she might be on the sidelines but you know but she's like definitely hung over and <laughs> <laughs> feeling insecure about how tight the outfit is like she's oh a real God. person you know I love that is she the one that you do adulting with too um she's not my co-star Mallory is my co-star in the show but uh, Jenna directed and wrote part of season two Oh, that's yeah. so exciting. So she's a big part of adulting as well. Oh my gosh. What's up with uh, adulting? What's next for that? Oh, thanks for asking. Oh my God, of course. 
yes. That's like my, my, the, how I know you is like <gasps> the web series. Yes. Like, um, you know, like, and it was so beautifully done. Like it, everything was shot. Awesome. Like you thought out everything. Thank you. Like at least from everything I've seen, I, I will admit I haven't seen all of it, That's okay. but like <laughs> what I have seen. Oh my God, girl. I'm like, yes. Oh, thank you. It's truly like my firstborn child. <laughs> I nice. like feel like it's my baby. Yeah. Um, we, so we have two seasons out now on Amazon prime. If anyone wants to check it out. Ooh. Um, and then we were shopping around season three and we were trying to like get that going and then COVID hit. So right now we're like working to find a home for it, um, to go like long term. So we're trying to like sell it essentially. Yeah. Uh, we just don't really want to crowdfund again for the show. And I feel like it could definitely have a home somewhere long term. Like, you know, something we realize as we keep getting older is that like adulting never stops. It just like becomes more difficult. Oh, it's like, so true. Learning new things. So we're like, we could do this for 10 years if someone gave us a home and the money to do it. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to find right now. It's like a long term space for it to to go because I mean now we're like going to friends weddings and I'm like learning I have to get people gift and I'm like what is that shit yeah yeah <laughs> I'm like learning so much in my, oh my like, god mid-20s now and so. so many people can relate literally yeah. every single day there's you can constantly be writing out things for oh, yes. life you know no my life gives me so much raw material it's like kind of scary <laughs> yes I know same with me yeah right there's oh so much like god. weird stuff that happens to you and you're like why is no one talking about this right <laughs> right I feel, I don't know, man. And even just like the littlest things like getting parking tickets and getting, how do you pay this? How do you do your taxes? Yeah. And like, I just learned about a Roth IRA and I'm like, what, why wasn't I doing this sooner? Yeah. I, I've never even started that yet, but I've heard of it. Yeah. You've heard of it, right? Yeah. And I'm I'm, like, I don't fucking know. Stocks? What the hell? Like, no, fuck that. I don't know what that is. (laughs) I'll get to it eventually, man. When I have more money. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. When I have something to actually contribute. I know. Fucking Sally Mae and goddamn student loans. Fuck. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And no one tells you about that either. Uh-huh. And now you're like, what the heck is this? Why did I do that? You right. Know? We're brainwashed at like 18 and we have to sign our life away pretty much. Yeah. And just be stuck. Yep. <laughs> and now you're like, I'm still paying for it. Great. Right. Yeah. Same here. It'll yeah. be fucking forever. God damn. Well, I'm so, I'm so glad to hear about adulting doing well and I'm going to have to catch up on season two because I haven't done season two yet. Oh but yeah. Check it out. Yeah. You say Amazon Prime? Amazon Prime. Yeah. If you look up adulting or you can go to our website, adultingwebseries.com and it's all there. Yes. But if any of you want to learn more about Cassidy and how she and her team can help grow your online presence, go to nashmediaco.com and follow her at Cassidy Nash Davis on Instagram and check out her adulting web series. It's so good. But thank you so much for being here, babe. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. I'm so glad. I'm so happy you liked it. But I am Jen Danzak and I will see you next time here on Unwomanly.